Sword fights. Everyone loves a good sword fight. They combine the best thing about chess, the strategy and finesse of a well-timed and executed move, with the ferocity of a wrestling match. Plus, they're normally really well scored. They're like a dance-off with more equipment and less impressive footwork. With that in mind, we thought that it's important to take a couple of minutes to go through five of the best sword fights in movies. While the Hobbit films were somewhat less than stellar, there's no doubt that Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings films were on the whole quite good, the Fellowship of the Ring especially. There were a lot of things in that film that worked really well. Saruman's New Orcs, the Balrog, the Secret Council, but the thing that really sold the film was the battle between Aragorn and the Ringwraiths. It may have been short, but it set the tone for the film, and it ends with an evil ghost getting a flaming torch to the face. What more does a film need than that? Rush, playing the role of Hector Barbosa, described this fight as an epic battle between two immortals, and is it ever. The choreography is pure Errol Flynn. It's over the top and quicker than a ship at full mast. Intercut with this scene is another sword fight. Will Turner, played by Orlando Bloom, and Elizabeth Swan, played by Kira Knightley, versus the undead crew of the Black Pearl. Plus, bringing back what we said about being really well scored, Hans Zimmer is on point with the theme for both this fight and the entire scene. The series may have gone off the map in later films, but Curse of the Black Pearl really was treasure. You won't have eyes tonight. You won't have ears or a tongue. You will wander the underworld blind, deaf and dumb, and all the dead will know. This is Hector, the fool who thought he killed Achilles. Okay, so this one is definitely a controversial choice. Classic students hate this film because it's not the Iliad. Lord of the Rings fans hate it because Legolas is a coward in it, and cinemaphiles hate it because, well, its quality is debatable. But 2004's Troy is notable because every single actor seems to be chewing the scenery in every single scene, and it has Eric Banner and Brad Pitt fighting with spears. Taking place the day after Hector killed Patroclus, Achilles' cousin in this version but lover protégé in the Iliad, it features some of the best choreography in a film that's pretty much built upon its sword-to-sword -sword choreography and the bankability of Brad Pitt. The fact that most of the fight is actually between two spear wielders, something which is rare in the medium for some reason, only makes the whole thing even better. Plus, Brad Pitt's Achilles really lays on the smack talk, hard. As the titular Bill says in Kill Bill Volume 2, Uma Thurman's character wasn't really fighting 88 bodyguards during this fight. According to the Kill Bill wiki, there are only 44 of them. Still, that's a considerable number of bodyguards for one woman to fight by herself, and Uma Thurman does it stylishly. She's called the world's deadliest woman throughout the film, but it's this scene in which the thesis is tested. It's one of the most stylish scenes Tarantino ever shot, and we'd argue still holds up compared to his later work. There's so much to say about this fight, but we'll just let the fact that the bride fought 44 bodyguards, as well as two bosses, and one speak for itself. There were a lot of options that we could have gone with for our ultimate battle of the blades. Hell. There were a lot of options we could have gone with from the Star Wars franchise. But after going through all seven films again, we've decided that the one to top them all has to be what was, for a long time, the final battle in the Star Wars trilogy. While not as technically flashy or quick as some of the fights from the prequel trilogy, the fight between Skywalker and Vader more than makes up for it in terms of both emotional impact, thematic appropriateness and score. And wow, what a score it is. John Williams is known for his scores, but we think this just takes the cake. Are there any sword fights you think we missed? Let us know in the comments below.